Good day and welcome to our short uh, demonstration and uh, explanation of how to get TensorFlow to function on Windows 10. We have a fresh machine here, as you can see in the bottom right, it says Activate. Uh, we've done virtually nothing with it. Uh, and uh, so let's get started. Uh, the instructions that are provided from uh, Google and others are really not very clear. Uh, so uh, what we want to do is go through and show you how to actually get this installed on a modern version of Windows 10. This is Windows 10 1909. As a quick bit of background, TensorFlow is a uh, Python library that uh, allows a lot of numerical computation um, that is uh, designed for a machine language. That's really the short uh, version of it. So uh, let's get going. What you want to do is you can either Google TensorFlow uh, install or you can just go to tensorflow.org slash install and it'll take you to this page and really where you want to go is just ignore everything on here and click read the pip install guide. That's the happy way to go. Ignore all of this stuff at the top, uh, just assuming you're running Windows 10 here, a current version of it. Uh, and um, what you want to do is run Python 3. So you think, okay, well, we'll get Python 3. So you go download Python whoops, 3. And in Python 3, you'll see that there are a lot of them. Uh, and uh, if you get 3.7 or 3.8, which is what I made the mistake of doing, you're probably going to be in hell. So what you need to do is get the last version of Python uh, 3.6. Uh, I don't know when this will change. Apparently there's workarounds for it uh, with daily builds and things, but I don't know. Uh, the, the point is uh, uh, Python 3.6 uh, from what my experience has been. So you look at this and you go Python 3.6.9. Great, I'll download it. Except look, no Windows build. Okay, so that's annoying. So go back. And go to 3.6.8, which you'll see if you just keep looking through here. 3.6.8 from December uh, 2018, so about a year ago from when this video is being recorded. Ignore everything here and go straight to, obviously, you're running the 64-bit. By the way, I understand it doesn't work on 32-bit anymore, so you're really going to want to make sure you're working on 64-bit windows. Uh, everybody is, so it's not much of an issue. Let's open it and install. Now, um, what you want to do is turn everything on. So go here, click Add Python 3.6 to Path, customize the install, make sure all of this is turned on, in particular pip, that's the big one. Uh, click Next. Now install for all users. If you don't, it will install in your profile, which is really obnoxious. So if you click Install here, it will install in C program files Python 36. Uh, well, 3.6 in my case, but uh, there we go. So I turn all of these on and click Install. Now this install takes about, uh, oh, two, three minutes to complete, so I'm going to zip through this and I'll get you back when it's ready. Uh, you also do need to click this Disable Path Limit. If When we go back to the instructions, uh, you'll see that it says to do this, so just do it now. And there we go. Now, uh, let's get rid of this. We don't need Python 3.6 page anymore. Now, let's just start rolling down the page. We want to click on Windows here. And um, so as it says here, you need Microsoft C++ 2015 redistributable uh, update 3. So um, you can click the link that they have, but it doesn't work very well. It takes you to Visual Studio, then you got to drill through that. So I just Google the thing and you'll get it much faster. So there it is. How's that for easy? And uh, download and take the 64-bit and uh, it'll take a second and then we install it, which is all click next. So let's do that. Agree, install, yep, go. Done. Close that. Uh, now, and again, don't, you can go through the link, but I wouldn't bother. It's quite annoying. Okay, so uh, now uh, what we need to do is bring up a command prompt, which, by the way, is not this command prompt, which I thought it was for the longest time. This one right here. I thought it was this one. See the uh, three arrows? Yeah, that's not the command prompt they're looking for. They want you to bring up an old school command prompt. So uh, I ran this as an administrator, even though it doesn't say to you. I don't know if you have to or not, but that's what I've done. And then just um, run the command. Installs a virtual environment. This will take a minute. And it says, well, I don't have access to this folder. So I've seen this before. And so what I've done, even though it does have access to that folder, uh, so what I've had to do is drill into it, drill into that particular user, you hidden files. There we go. App data, uh, local 
temp and pip installer. There we go. Now, this makes no sense to me at all, but that's what they've done. Uh, it says you don't have access to your own folder, which you clearly do. So, uh, full control. There we go. Then run the command again. There we go. Next, you're gonna, you'll see this one more time uh, that where it needs permissions change, which would be great if it told you. And maybe I'm missing something, but this works, so <laughs> that's, that's what I'm doing. Okay, so at this point, uh, we have uh, the core products installed, and uh, there's a there's we should go through this in order, but I want to show you this list. So uh, this command here is actually quite useful. So pip list, and what it will do is it'll show you what you've got installed. There you go. Okay. Okay, so I made a mistake, and I didn't want you to see it, so I killed it. <laughs> so let's uh, show you what to do properly here. So at this point, uh, what we've got installed is uh, the uh, virtual environment uh, stuff is installed, and now I need to get it running. So I'm going to copy that command, and I want you to notice the Python 3 here. That's going to fail because it's not Python 3. It's Python. There we go, and then this will run. There we go. Now, what we need to do is activate the virtual environment. And I'll show you what that actually has built. There we go. So when I go into uh, C program files, Python 36, which is where this uh, started, uh, it created a VENV folder. And you can see there's the information and the virtual environment. Uh, now we need to upgrade pip. Now, uh, I've already done this, so it's probably just going to tell me it's fine. But in yours, it's going to run a quick upgrade. Yeah, it's already up to date in mine. Now the next thing is just take a look at that, uh, what you've got installed, and you should see four things now. The first three that were there before, plus wheel, and there it is. Uh, wheel seems to be related to this virtual environment, and I'm sure if you know what you're doing with this, this makes sense, but it makes no sense to me. I'm simply going through, trying to get through a cookbook, uh, which really had a lot of errors and problems with it. So uh, what we want to do now is we want to install TensorFlow. And this is going to take a minute, so I'm just going to grab that command paste it in, and this will take a minute or two, and I will speed it up so you don't have to sit here and wait. There we go, so that took a good minute and a half, two minutes, and that's on a, a modern uh, Dell Optiplex 5070 with an i7 in it, and a blazingly fast uh, Crucial P1 uh, Solid State M2, so uh, yours will probably be a bit slower. Okay, so at this point, all we want to prove is that it's working. So you go into here. Uh, actually, I'm just going to copy, click that copy command there. And let's see what happens. Paste. And there we go. It's up and happy. So that's it. Uh, what you can do with TensorFlow? Well, you'll have to find other uh, things to uh, read about that. If you have any questions or concerns uh, about what we've, so, what we've shown, then please get a hold of us at www.urtech.ca. Thank you. Bye-bye.